good afternoon gentlemen today we'll talk about uh, development of various ship types uh, ship types have generally evolved based on so called mission requirement the requirement of the ship to perform a mission in very narrow terms mission requirement would mean carrying carriers of a particular type of deadweight at a particular type at a particular speed however in broader terms mission requirement will be primarily from the business angle that is the vessel should be able to earn profit to its owners as you are aware uh, over the years the economic environment has changed in the international scenario uh, starting with the reconstruction phase after the world war then the expansion of economy in the 60s coming up to 70s then the oil crisis and then sub subsequently development till today today the world is very competitive and therefore the profitability of a mission has acquired a renewed significance it was always there but today people realize that if one has to survive one has to be economically viable along with this as we have discussed earlier there have been a, a lot of advances in the technological scenario and leading to design developments the mission requirement coupled with technological and uh, design development have led to the ship type scenario today uh, based on this the ship sizes have changed over the years the appearances have changed and also the general characteristics of various ship types have changed sometimes as you will see even the trade pattern has affected ship type to a large extent some ships were very common earlier like general general cargo carriers have reduced in number and new ship types such as container vessels have taken over tankers and bulk carriers grew in size based on economic uh, uh, principles to very large sizes and then they came down to a more stable size subsequent to pollution becoming a major issue in the international arena design wise ships have changed based on this requirement and also some other technical develop technological development deck houses which were initially in the middle of the ship in the midship region have slowly moved aft today we have most of the merchant vessels having aft engine room with uh, accommodation aft sometimes in naval vessels based on mission requirement again and the space availability the engine room may be moved slightly forward taking up taking up uh, is called the semi aft region between aft and midship today it is not so much as the size that is affecting ship design uh, in other words we are not looking for larger and faster vessels anymore or newer ship types more emphasis is perhaps on consolidating what we have gained so far subject to restrictions imposed by external factors some of them you are very well aware port and seaway restrictions uh, you have draft restrictions you have uh, width restrictions panama canal suez canal sorry panama canal st lawrence seaway etc um 
shifts are frequently required to call at ports which have very low draft and uh, restrictions imposed by political events that is closure of particular passages and things like that other things that have affected today's ship type design and uh, construction are perhaps fuel cost on one hand and regulatory requirement on the other hand. Uh, regulatory requirement was not so severe a few years back, but today safety, pollution, etc., have made ships definitely more expensive. Therefore, more design effort has to be spent on optimizing the ship with regard to its acquisition cost as well as operational cost. The new thing that has come with regard to regulatory regime is the security requirements. You have to see how designs evolve with regard to security requirement. This is something new. So, perhaps we have to wait and see. Certainly, this will change the operational requirement of the ships, the demands that are made of navigating officers and uh, marine engineers and ship crew with regard to security of ship will be more in the future. So, this is basically what has led to changes of various ship types in the last 50 years. Some of these we will discuss during the course of this lecture. Let us take the most common of the ship types, the general cargo carrier. This is the ship which was most common since good old times. What does this mean? General cargo carrier means variety of cargo packed in different shapes and sizes which can be put into a ship and carried to different places. How to do this? What is the requirement of carrying variety of cargo in uh, different shapes and sizes in a ship? If we can list the requirements, the first one that will come to our mind is the uh, floor area. Since these cargoes cannot be loaded one on top of the other, the main requirement will be the floor, the horizontal level where we can put our cargo. And the more floor area you have, the better it is for carrying different types of cargo. So, you see this leads to multi deck ships. Straight away, we can say we can give more floor area if we have number of decks. As soon as you have a large number of cargo, essentially to handle this, you require cargo handling gear. And uh, the efficiency of the ship will depend on how quickly you can load and unload the ship and also accessibility of the cargo handling gear to the cargo you want to unload. Earlier days, it was thought that less than half the beam of the ship, if we have a hatch opening, which is a little less than half the beam of the ship, then it is convenient to load and unload and it does not impose any structural uh, deficiencies on the ship structure. But it also meant that for lower deck regions, the accessibility of the cargo hook was limited. Therefore, you had to handle the cargo inside the hold by some other means, typically by forklift trucks or by manual means to bring the cargo into the 
center of the hole from where you could load and unload. So, this was a time consuming process. Over the years, therefore, we have the development of twin and triple hatch ships. It is true that if you have a large opening on a ship, then you have structural problems leading to torsion and loss of material leading to bending problems. But if you have twin hatch ships or triple hatch ships, you can go up to about 75 percent of the deck being open, but marginal loss of structural properties only. So, we have got, we have seen the development of twin hatch and triple hatch ships in general cow carriers for this purpose. I am not quite sure whether you know what is the difference between liner ships and tramp ships. Do you know? Okay. A liner ship is one that goes between two fixed ports by a scheduled time, ship time frame. And tramp ship is one that goes from any port to any port depending on cargo available. As soon as you define these two ship types, the economic criteria also get defined. That is, a liner ship will have to be more uh, prompt in carrying the cargo in right time. And since the route is fixed, it is possible to plan your journey such that sea time over a year is increased and port time is reduced. Why is port time and sea time important? You will appreciate if I tell you a ship earns money when at sea and loses money when at port. Is that correct? Not always. Not always? Okay, charter loses money, not the ship owner. Okay, can we say like that? Oh, well, 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 we are not discussing that. We are discussing pure transportation, development of ship types. We are not di discussing a single ship earning profit by any means. For example, you can use a ship as uh, you use a uh, use you do as an estate agent you buy and sell ships we are not concerned about that we are concerning here about transportation and its effects on development so to that extent a general statement can be made that if a ship is at sea is earning money and if it's at port it is spending money with a rider that at sea means it must have a reasonable speed to make number of voyages. Not that it is very slow and at sea one port, it is uh, one trip it is making over a long period of time. Uh, a liner ship by virtue of being, this is generally true for all types of liner ships, whether it is a container liner or a passenger liner or whatever. The freight is higher in a liner sh ship than a tramp ship. Freight is higher, which effectively means that freight is of all uh, cargo is of higher value. You will pay higher freight for a high value cargo to be transported in a short time. May it be passengers, may it be uh, uh, containers, or may it be valuable general cargo, such as teaches or bananas or edible oil. Okay, so you have cargo ships, two types, the cargo liner and general cargo ship, yeah, which are tramps. What are the characteristics of these two ships types? we can easily generate now that cargo liner is one that uh, has a quick turnaround time at port 
because it does not want to spend time at port and uh, which has a little higher speed some somewhere between 15 to 20 knot more than 15 going more towards 20 knot 17 18 knot speed <coughs> quick maneuverability at port may be coupled with uh, uh, additional maneuvering devices <coughs> and a tramp ship on the other hand would be more like a workhorse kind of ship which should be cheap to acquire who should have a load low enough draft that it can go to any port any minor port at various ports of call and it can carry large amount of cargo variety of cargo a tramp ship will succeed only if it can take variety of cargo so therefore it is possible that the tramp ships will have a large hold for carrying large cargo uh, large sized cargo such as uh, 20 meter steel plates, rails, etc. And accordingly cargo handling gear. It is also known that some tramp cargo ships are coupled with, are uh, fitted with heavy lift cargo so that they can carry heavy cargo on board the ships. Surprisingly, these ships have more or less remained same is them in their sizes over the last 50 years. Between length has varied between 450 to 550 feet or 137 meters to 168 meters. That's the size of cargo ships. You don't you don't get very large ships or very small ships. Tramp ships are generally on the lower lower limit and liner ships are on the higher limit. Tramp ships dead weight would be somewhere between 12,000 to 15,000 tons and a liner ship would have a dead weight of 15,000 to 20,000 tons. Speed as I mentioned would be about 15 knots for uh, uh, tramp ships and more towards 20 knots for liner ships. Okay, now we can look at some of the uh, sections, how do you do the cargo space arrangement in a general cargo ship. If I draw out a section shape, I am doing a single hatch ship. As I mentioned, there can be more than one deck. Let's put two decks here. Okay. I can have a girder arrangement here below like this. This of course comes down like this. Can you can you can you see it? Now I can have a hatch cover in the twin deck region in a manner that the floor on top becomes uniform when I close the hatch cover. Let us see, then I can have different cargoes here. Like that. And here I can have again different uh, bigger size cargoes. Let us say typically can I have containers here. So on and so forth. Okay. My point of showing you this is that now the ship can carry as you can see different types of cargo. I can have more cargo here on the hatch cover, right. If I go for a very versatile design, how would it look?
mind you all this depends on what is your mission requirement that's why i spent time in explaining to you what is my what is the meaning of mission requirements i can have multi decks here typically a car carrier and i can have like that i can go on carrying number of cars okay now when i am not carrying cars i have cars here also when i am not carrying cars how is this ship going to be used because this height will not be any good to me for carrying and something else if i had my hatch covers designed sized in a particular manner then i could carry containers when i am not carrying cars right this is my hatch cover here right i am carry my containers decks being wherever they are let the decks be there doesn't matter they don't interfere i could also have just see this i could have also design these decks in foldable form so that you see this deck here this can be folded to take this shape and i can have all these decks sliding upwards so that they can be folded one below the other and i can use this for carriage of bulk so general cargo ships have evolved on more or less these principles over the years if you look at a general cargo ship it will have a large amount of versatility being built into the system we have some standard ships in the general cargo ship category can you name let me name it for you have you heard this i'm sure you would have heard this mariner class a standard design from the united states 50 or more of these have been built in the world till about mid 60s and the one you i'm sure you would have heard is the freedom class and another one which was developed but never took off very well is the fortune class these are standard designs okay now if you look at these ships they are all developed around 1945 to 50 that period post second world war a large number of these ships were required in the world at that time to move large amount of construction material since half the world was being reconstructed and a large number of these ships were built and they are used till about mid 60s or early 70s but after that nobody has built these vessels this brings out a very interesting observation i would like to share with you it's very well known that if you have a standard design it will be cheaper to build and delivery time will be quick that's how these ships came and were built but they never made a tradition in other words the shipping business does not prefer standard designs 
Why? Because the mission requirement keeps changing from time to time. The trade pattern, the economic demand keeps changing from time to time and it is not supported adequately by any standard design. This is a very, very interesting observation. I don't know whether you will agree with me or not, uh, but it is a fact that we do not have standard designs, right. Okay. So, can we move on to, uh, let us say, what should we look at after this? Container ships, a general, um, a natural uh, ev evolution of a general cargo ship would be a container ship. What is a container? What is the principle of a container ship? A container is nothing but a box of a standard size. Can we name the sizes? Okay. So, container sizes. I will just give you rough sizes. I will give you rough size. The accurate size is given in the ISO standards. We have in the international scene most common four standards 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. The lengths are 40 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet, and 10 feet. This is length, breadth, can you tell me? Huh? Yeah. 8 feet and depth, eight feet or eight and a half feet. Now, what is this 8 feet or 8 and a half feet? See, most of the countries have a restriction of moving containers on four wheels, that is on trailers, which have a height more than 9 feet. So, generally you will find all containers which are not standard have a height 9 feet or less than that. It is difficult to move on roads otherwise. This Europe and uh, India have the same standard. I think the standard is same on American roads also, but I am not sure. So, International Standards Organization uh, in its effort to standardize containers fix the height at 8 feet, but most of the American containers are 8 and a half feet. So, ISO in later years has adopted 8 and a half, half feet also as a marine standard. Of these four container sizes, I will name this and this are the two commonly used marine containers. Okay. So, this 20 feet unit is called TEU and this is called FEU, 20 feet equivalent unit and 40 feet equivalent unit. That is, is FEU is equal to two TEUs. Why why did the container ship evolve? Why the concept of standardized movement of, sorry, movement of standardized boxes? This came from the concept of door to door transportation. This is the concept which demanded a standardized box size. You will realize that if you are a purchaser of an item, a machine part or any item from abroad, then the transportation chain from the manufacturer to the receiver that is to the buyer involves road or, road or rail transport at one end, storage at the port, sea transport, storage at the port, 
again road rail or river transport at the other end before the good reach, goods reach the buyer so if you have a standard box then the entire movement process can be standardized including cargo handling movement of vehicle on road rail or river boats or ships and the biggest advantage is you could seal the container at the uh, seller end that is manufacturer end and break the seal only at the purchaser end avoiding uh, inspection customs clearance etc which take time and uh, also pilferage pilferage as you know in the international uh, scene is a major problem and if you have standard boxes which are sealed at the manufacturer end and received at the other end pilferage problem is also reduced handling of course improves tremendously and all the items involved in moving this standard box from one place to other can be standardized this uh, concept has picked up very well from mid 60s and slowly the sea transport sector has also accepted container movement as a standard practice and today we have container ships that can carry these standard units uh, in a systematic manner you can see one of the biggest advantages against the general cargo ships that is whereas a general cargo ship required floor area a container ship provides the floor by the container itself the top of one container can be a floor for the other container so if i have a bottom layer of containers then i can use the top of that as the next layer but i can't go beyond it do you understand what i'm saying if i have a particular area here for containers i can only use that area for carrying containers vertically upwards i can't move horizontally <coughs> if i can utilize maximum space like that then i know don't need decks the decks that we provided in cargo ships for providing floor i don't need to provide in a container ship is that clear right it also means that if i have to carry a large number of containers i must have a very wide hatch the hatch must be as wide as perhaps the entire deck if i have only 50% clearance of the deck as in the case of a cargo ship then i can access only 50% of the deck area for uh, vertically down to carry containers that means 50% of the space will be wasted i do not wish that so container ships are generally open deck nearly open deck ships it has its problems and the main problem is of course strength as you know loss of material on top means the moment of inertia is reduced from top contribution to moment of inertia or section modulus reduces from top and stress levels increase furthermore as you may be aware torsional problems increase tremendously in a completely open ship it's like a box you have and you cut open the top then you can easily twist the box the same thing appears in a container so if you have the complete deck open then any sort of uh, loading on the ship due to wave action a, a loading of the ship if this is the ship and you have loading this side and you are loading down below then the vessel tends to twist so torsional stresses increase and bending and torsion combined create a very dangerous situation so container ship structural design has to be done properly 
so as to see that the stress levels due to combination of uh, bending and torsion are within limits. What else is the problem in a container ship? In fact, every little aspect that we have learned so far is problematic in a container ship. Let us look at stability. What happens to stability? You have these boxes being loaded from the bottom going up to the hatch cover, put the hatch cover and you load the containers on top. So, automatically you go on raising the CG of the ship, the CG of the ship. So, as you know GM is equal to KM minus KG, KG increases, so metacentric height reduces. If you have fully loaded containers, then your metacentric height really reduces to or may go to negative. So, invariably in container ship you will find that the top layers are less loaded containers or light containers. A light container, a light TEU will weigh about 2 tons. So, if you have 2 tons weight on top, it is not really very small, but it is smaller than 20 tons. Investigation of stability has to be done very accurately for container ships. Uh, very, I should not use the word accurately. With these people sitting there, everything has to be done accurately, of course. But uh, oh, what you have to do is in more detailed way, that is, different loadings compared to any other ship. The container ship has a stability investigation has to be done in all possible loading conditions of containers, that is, loaded containers at the bottom, light containers on top, or semi loaded containers, half loaded containers on the deck and light containers on top and so many combinations you have to investigate and see. Additionally, there is something else that takes place in the containers. If you got a large amount of windage area because of the containers. So, wind healing moment is also tremendous in case of uh, this thing. So, what happens? Your containers, your container ship has a very low GM, a GZ curve which is likely to be reduced in size when the wind is there, still you have investigated found it positive. Now, there is a roll motion. The accelerations on top being far away from the CG are quite high. Can you understand this? I have got something which is rolling. The rolling is normally around the center of gravity of the ship, axis passing through center of gravity of the ship. So, far away from, from the axis, I will have more amplitude of roll, uh, sorry, angular amplitude is same, but linear amplitude is more, because it is far away. But since the period is same, the top amplitude causes larger acceleration. Am I clear? Once you have larger acceleration, the problem that comes up is stresses on the holding devices, holding devices, the lashings, the cell guides, the stresses increase. So, it is necessary that this also must be looked into. Otherwise, your ship is nice and rolling and two containers have gone from top. You had, yes. There are many problems that a container ship faces because of this. One of them is what is called parametric rolling or in the following C condition. We talked about beam C. When the C is from behind, it automatically causes rolling of the ship, which you would have normally not investigated. See, beam C is a rare occasion. Whenever there is a beam C, the captain turns the ship headways. But in following C, he is not doing that, he cannot reverse and go back. So, the C is following. In container ships, where your GZ curve has limited value, it so happens that it raises, it, it in, induces rolling motion, which is called parametric rolling. So, in such rolling motion, even if you do not have a BMC, your containers are again in trouble. You can lose containers. So, container ships uh, require. Uh, sort of uh, good insight into design 
when you do a continuous substitution. All this has to be put into it. What is the vision problem is taking care through uh, regulations regarding blind zone. We do that to have, if you have severe vision problem, then of course you can have a, a partial forward. navigation, now navigating now. officers accommodation in the forward. forward. Yeah, you can have accommodation split into two parts. The engine crew stays behind and the uh, yeah, and. Uh, you could also take some aid, uh, take uh, help of modern gadgets like televisions and things like that mounted on the forward end so that you can get a view of the forward part through remote. Continuous users slowly increased in size. Today people are talking about 9,000, 10,000 uh, TU carrying container ships. But most of these container ships cannot come to most of the ports. So you have uh, feeder container service. You have uh, what you have the main uh, hub at two places. These are called hubs, and the, this this is the main container route. You can say this is the main container ship route, and then this hub can supply to smaller ports. And these are called feeder service. This is feeder service. Okay. From this, we can see that since con all container ships are, of course, liner ships, they are high value cargo, freight is higher, and uh, The main container ships are bigger ships. Uh, we have discussed already that the sea time has to be increased and port time is to be reduced. So they are normally fast ships. Um, as soon as you make a ship fast, it becomes fine. Some block coefficient should be reduced or prismatic should be reduced and uh, speed is higher. Go to 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 knots. On the other hand, the feeder service is generally smaller container vessels traveling smaller distances of the order of 1000 to 3000 nautical miles, whereas the main container route can be 8000 to 10,000 nautical miles. Um, the same principle should hold for the feeder service, but when you do engineering economics of ship operation, you will find that the speed requirement is very much related to the size of the ship and the route on which you are moving. Since this feeder service has smaller vessels moving or smaller distances, the speed requirement is not like that of a main container trade route uh, ship. Whereas a main, main route container ship may have a speed of 18 to 24 knots, a feeder service can perhaps work efficiently between a speed of 14 to 17 knots. The speed requirement is much reduced in a feeder service. Okay. This container ship uh, development has led to a very interesting concept called open hatch container ships. Uh, you have heard about this. Huh? No, no. Cellular container ship need not necessarily be open hatch. Cellular container ship is one when you, where you have permanent cell guides. Instead of lashing the containers to the bottom, locking the containers to the bottom and lashing the top containers to various fixed structures, which is the normal way of holding containers, including top containers. What we have is, if you have shell guides in the form of, uh, if you have cell guides like this at the correct intervals, then I can just push in a slide in a container like this. Okay. And I can have the cell guides in different shapes and sizes, different configurations where the same cell guide can hold four containers 
like this. Okay, so this is my cell guide arrangement. I have cell guides here. Yeah, I can have cell guides which go like pillars in the this thing with the proper angle, 90 degree angle. All I have to do is slide the continuous. Four high, six high, seven high, eight high. Cell guides do not have a restriction. You have to have the strength. That's the main requirement. But the disadvantage is they're permanent. They have to be permanent if they have to take large loads. So you cannot have a ship with cell guides used for any other purpose. It must always be used for carriage of containers. So when the ship doesn't have any containers in itself, in it, you'll find all the cell guides rising inside the hold and normally they are stopped at the hatch level when you close the hatch and you can have containers on top by lashing or some other arrangement you can have for example horizontal uh, guides instead of vertical guides which can be rigid instead of lashing and have that no i was talking of open hatch container ships which are the new concept that is you don't have hatch covers at all. You have an open ship at sea. You see, normally containers are considered watertight. Containers are designed such that the cargo inside is not damaged by weather effect when they are at port. So they are considered watertight. So if my complete container uh, hold, I am having containers then why should I have a hatch? The inside cargo is all watertight. There is no place left because the entire place under the hatch I have covered with containers. And if I have bulkheads at the end of the hatches, there is no open space in this thing. So even if there is a rain or ingress of water due to any reason, my containers are not affected. And there is no place for massive amount of water accumulating inside the ship. So there is really no need for a hatch cover. So if I can avoid a hatch cover, I can have these cell guides going right up to the top, some four or five tiers higher above the conventional hatch cover height. And I can have all the containers going up without losing the space of the hatch cover. You get my point? So this would be ideal. Only problem is, sorry, hatch covers do not contribute to strength. Hatch covers do not contribute to strength. This you must accept. Totally open. No, no, you have a similar container ship deck arrangement, except that there is no hatch cover. Okay. You can, in fact, have a hatch cover, hatch combing running through and through of the ship, and it will contribute to mixed section model if it's a continuous setting. But you don't have require, if you don't have hatch covers, you can have open hatch ship. The problem still comes that there may be spaces due to leakage or anything, there may be a water accumulation. Uh, and if we're particularly when you are not carrying containers, the hold is empty, then what do you do? What is so these ships are normally these ships have been built, open hatch container ships, but they have to undergo Severe testing of motions, motion studies have to be done very accurately to see that green sea does not come on board, that the probability of green sea getting onto the hold should be reduced, which is not there in a normal hatch cover based ship. And uh, whatever water does come in, how does it get out? Yeah, we have to have a large number of or a very uh, elaborate arrangement of ballast water discharge with pumps and pipelines, which will be working during the voyage. So that is how you can have a open hatch container ship. But after building a few of these, somehow it has not taken favor of the operator. One does not feel comfortable thinking a open ship going at sea. One more characteristic of container ships you must realize as distinctly different from bulk carriers and uh, uh, general cargo ships or tankers that they do not have a so-called ballast falls, except when it is going for survey. 
that is it is almost always loaded like LPG LNG carriers right. So, they do not go in ballast because it is necessary that the empty containers also must be carried. So, always either the ship is carrying loaded containers or empty containers or a combination of both. So, they have a one speed requirement whereas, bulk carriers and tankers have a two speed requirement. I will just show you a container ship midship section which you have seen earlier. What is it? Even going without the transfer bulkhead. Yeah. Without a transverse bulkhead. I have not said that. Transverse bulkhead is there. Only hatch cover is missing. You see this. You see this. Can you see this? This is the entire space I am using for containers, and this is the hatch cover, and this is my upper deck arrangement. I can have 1, 2, 3, 4 layers. All I am doing is if I remove this hatch cover here, then I get this space and I can load my containers just like that. Okay. Okay, thank you. We will have a break here and we will discuss about other ships in the next topic.